First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. We begin today's show by tracking the potential for strong storms in our area. Here's a look of our campus cam. WUFT's Derek Getter tells us what we can expect in the following hours. Well, this is a campus cam. Over the last four hours, you can see storms already hitting parts of the panhandle, and there is the chance for some scattered showers in the northern part of Gainesville. As this cold front continues to shift further east, storms are hitting Jacksonville, and we are seeing severe risk for thunderstorms. Right now, we're under an isolated marginal risk, and the primary hazards include damaging wind, some hail and an isolated tornado in Gainesville. We just make the cusp, so we aren't expecting too much severe weather here. The severe weather is mainly going to stay further north, but I'll have more on where exactly these storms are moving coming up. At least 26 people were killed in Mississippi and Alabama over the weekend when an EF4 tornado touched down. The twister was on the ground for almost an hour, according to officials, producing winds stronger than a Category 5 hurricane. The town of Rolling Fork, Mississippi was especially hit hard as residents there are continuing to sift through debris looking for anything they can salvage. Rolling Fork, Mississippi Mayor Eldred Walker, who is also a funeral director in town, said he personally lost several friends when the tornado struck and is now also having to deal with planning their funerals. Yes, I've lost several friends, several friends that I'm having to face their families to arrange funeral services and to start the first, the first phase of closure and the loss of their loved one. Walker thanks city and state officials who have shown their support for the community and who he will work alongside with to restore the town. More strong reaction today to the country's latest deadly school shooting in Tennessee. While Americans were asked what can be done to prevent these seemingly endless mass shootings, lawmakers are weighing in and for the most part digging in along party lines. NBC's Alice Barr has more. Words fail in the face of another brutal American tragedy, the killing of six people, including three nine-year-old children in a Nashville Christian grade school. In the U.S. Capitol today, the Senate chaplain using his opening prayer to push lawmakers to act. It is time for us to move beyond thoughts and prayers. President Biden pressing Congress to renew an assault weapons ban. The last time we passed the assault weapons ban, violent shootings went down. Mass shootings went down. Lawmakers faced with the devastating numbers, 131 mass shootings in the United States already this year, 13 with death or injuries in a K-12 through school. This is uniquely American. But new federal gun safety legislation seems nearly impossible with a Republican-controlled House. Leading GOP Congressman Steve Scalise, himself a victim of a mass shooting, says it's not about the guns. Let's work to see if there's something that we can do to help secure schools. The Republican representing the district where the Nashville shooting happened agrees. The mental health crisis we have in this country, that needs to be the real conversation that we're having right now. Dr. Emily Lieberman, who survived last year's July 4th parade shooting in Highland Park, Illinois, pushing back. The only thing that separates the tragic, traumatized person who's filled with hate from going out and doing something so terrible is the access to the gun. She's now a gun safety advocate fighting to break a tragic American cycle. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. At least 39 migrants died after a fire broke out at a migrant holding center in the border city of Juarez, Mexico. Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador said the fire began after migrants set fire to mattresses in protest after discovering they would be deported. There were 68 men from Central and South America being held at the facility in the Mexican northern city. 29 of them were injured in the blaze and taken to four hospitals in the area. Mexican officials said those who died included migrants from Guatemala and Honduras. 
Governor Ron DeSantis held a press conference in Miami on Monday. WUFT's Joseph Jacobsuk explains the newest Florida legislator DeSantis unveiled during the, the conference. A law allowing K-12 students the ability to receive taxpayer-funded vouchers for private schooling was signed into legislation Monday by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. This is part of an abundance of changes DeSantis has made towards state education. Many believe the legislation to be a final push from DeSantis to further strengthen his stance on education ahead of his highly anticipated presidential campaign. There'll be a preference for low and middle income families, uh, but at the end of the day, we fundamentally believe that the money should follow the student uh, and it should be directed based on what the parent thinks is the most appropriate education program for their child. The old way of thinking was like the Hotel California. Your kid could go into the, the school they were zip coded for, but they could never leave, no matter whether that school met their needs or not. And so school choice means there's also an exit door. The law promises to eliminate income eligibility limits on the program and expand Florida's voucher system. Back to you guys. They're calling it a citizen emergency rally. Parents of students in Marion County Public Schools are planning to show up at the school board meeting and make their voices heard. The parents are urging the school board to remove 25 books that contain what they call pornographic material, including extremely loud and incredibly close, forever and all boys aren't blue. The meeting begins at 5.30 tonight. Coming up after the break, we have information on a new sports center coming to Clay County. Also, found out, find out about a local legend who has passed away after the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome back. Big cuts are happening at Disney. The happiest place on earth announced yesterday it will be cutting 7,000 jobs. Chief Executive Bob Iger said the reason behind the cuts have to do with the company's workforce reductions. Layoffs will begin taking place in three rounds beginning this week and will continue into April and the beginning of summer. Iger sent a memo to all Disney employees yesterday about the cuts. Marin County is beginning to look for poll workers for the 2024 election. Some of the precincts that need additional staffing include Citra, McIntosh, and Micanopy. Poll workers must be registered in Marion County and available to work a 14-hour shift on Election Day. They will also be required to attend a training before the election. Marion County election workers can earn between $155 and $240, depending on their role. For more information, you can visit votemarion.gov. Clay County is a few steps closer in developing its new $7.2 million sports complex that should be ready for use early next year. Officials held a ceremonial groundbreaking this morning to mark the construction of eight multi-purpose fields in the 300-car parking lot that will sit on 250 acres. The county will develop 46 of those acres. The Florida Department of Economic Development contributed $3 million for the project, with other funding coming from a public-private partnership. The site will sit just north of the intersection on State Roads 16 and 21, and the project will also include a multi-use trail. Yeah, um, I'm not sure about you, Megan, but I'm still pretty concerned with the severe weather we're seeing in the Panhandle. Up coming up after the break, we'll toss it to Dara Getter to give us more details. Stay with. Us. You're watching WUFT TV News. Another local musician has died. Co-founding member of the Gainesville band, Mudcrutch Tom Ledden, passed away at 70. A singer, songwriter, guitarist, instructor, and childhood friend and bandmate of the late Tom Petty, Ledden was a known legend in the music industry. Mudcrutch bandmate Mike Campbell took to Twitter to express his grief, calling Ledden his deepest guitar soul brother. In a 2018 interview with WUFT, Ledden shared moments from when Petty was getting the van back together. The plan was evolving, I think, as he was talking to me. Like one time, he, I remember he said, yeah, there was, there's probably going to be a record deal down the line. And I just remember, wow, a record deal. <laughs> you know? Well, can they still play? But it's interesting to me that we used to actually On Wednesday. When the band was first together, this would be about 
Yeah, I'm still pretty concerned with the weather and the panhandle. I know. It looked really gloomy out there today, and I didn't bring my umbrella with me. Let's see if Dara has more information. Here is where these storms have been shifting over the last four hours. You can see the bulk of that severe weather is to the north of us, the Tallahassee, Lake City, and northern Jacksonville. Though there is the chance for some scattered showers in our area, much of the severe weather is going to stay to the north of us. You can see some really heavy rain in Lake City, especially along I-10. And within the next 30 minutes, Fort White, Brooker and Hampton could be seeing rain and within the next hour, High Springs and Luis could be seeing some downpours. In our area, it looks like we're going to continue to stay dry. This is 5 p.m. and as we head further into those evening hours, that chance for rain is going to increase. There is the chance that we could be seeing some scattered showers and thunderstorms, but much of that severe weather is going to stay in Lake City and Jacksonville. This is 8 p.m. and you can see those storms already starting to weaken as that rain shifts further off the east coast and later on tonight as the much of that rain continues to move south along with that cold front. It's going to be bringing us a few more scattered showers late tonight, but we should be dry as we head into early Wednesday morning. Now the severe weather has put us under an isolated marginal risk and some of these risks do include damaging wind, an isolated tornado and some hail, but we barely make that cusp. You can see how dark the clouds are outside right now though, especially over the Ben Griffin Hill Stadium. We have some west winds moving in at 15 miles per hour, which is a big jump from what we saw earlier today and temperatures are already dropping at 8 p.m. You can see a 60% chance of rain. So as we head into those overnight hours, the chance for storms are going to increase and tonight we'll have temperatures in the mid 60s. Tomorrow is a different story. It isn't going to be rainy, mostly sunny skies and with all of that moisture in the air from those showers we saw today. There is the chance for some patchy fog tomorrow morning and we are going to be seeing north wind, especially tomorrow afternoon, keeping temperatures a bit below average in the mid 70s. Now the rest of this week we are tracking rain on Saturday and Sunday, but it looks like we'll be climbing back to near 90 next week. There's a new holiday that was approved by the county commissioners today. That's right, April 15th to the 22nd will now be known as International Dark Sky Week in Alachua County. The meeting began with the first item on the agenda, the approval of International Dark Sky Week here in Alachua County. Commissioner Mary Alford presented it to Leanne Mazinski, who is a delegate for the International Dark Skies Association. From now on in Alachua County, April 15th through the 22nd will be dedicated to raising awareness about light pollution. The International Dark Sky Association is the globally recognized authority on light pollution. Delegates and chapters around the world work with local municipalities to spread ecological and health benefits of a naturally dark sky. The proclamation reads that 80% of the world's population lives under a dome of light pollution, excessive artificial light that disrupts natural darkness. Mazinski says that figure is expected to increase by 10% each year really something that's a growing problem but it can be easily fixed and so I think it's about um, getting people the knowledge um, so that they can make the right choices. Some of the local nocturnal species that are affected by this are possums, raccoons, owls, fireflies, flying squirrels, and bats. I know the bat houses are a big tourist draw here and of course they're the nocturnal creatures as well and that we are all excited about having them in our yards with the mosquito population that we've got. We really do need to make sure that those guys are our friends. There are a few steps that Gainesville residents could take to help reduce light pollution in the county. Light pollution is one of the easiest pollutions to correct um, and it's as easy as turning your lights off, using them only when and where they're needed, only as bright as you need them, and employing things like motion detector. Now, other delegates around Florida are working with different counties, seeking approval for their own Dark Sky Week. Mazinski says the next step, getting International Dark Sky Week recognized statewide. Troy Myers, WUFT News. The Gator softball team now sits at number 21 in the NCAA national rankings. That's impressive. 
Looks like the weather should be clear tomorrow so we can catch them back in action against a Florida rival. Stay tuned to find out more about a key player coming up in this upcoming matchup. Stay with us. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome to sports, I'm Taylor Burr. Tonight's sunshine showdown between the Florida baseball team and FSU has been postponed because of the lack of sunshine. With the threat of bad weather rolling in, the game has been rescheduled for Tuesday, May 2nd in Jacksonville. A pair of Florida softball rivals meet up tomorrow night as the Gators host Stetson and all eyes will be on Florida's star pitcher Lexi Delbray. The right-hander has had the right stuff all season in the circle. Lexi no-hit Rutgers last month and has had two one-hitters to her credit. The only missing piece to this nearly flawless resume, a perfect game. She nearly pulled that off the last time she faced Stetson. Tomorrow, Lexi will get another crack at perfection. Game time is 7 p.m. in Gainesville. Moving to the hardwood, the UF women's basketball team's postseason finally came to an end. After putting up a tough fight, the Gators lost 69-52 against Bowling Green in the WNIT Great Eight. UF struggled putting points on the board. Liani Cora was the only Gator to score within double figures. Defensively, Bowling Green held the Gators scoreless for five straight minutes in the first half and forced nine turnovers. UF finished the season with 19 and 15 record. The women's NCAA tournament is now down to their final four and two SEC teams remain. Number one seed South Carolina is looking to win back to back championships as they ride a 42 game winning streak into the final four. The Gamecocks have made it look easy this season, winning every game but one by double figures. Gators football continues another week of spring practice. The theme of this week, defense, defense, defense. The outside linebackers have been working hard, especially when it comes to coverage responsibilities. And the man responsible for those linebackers, Coach Mike Peterson, says it's all about a learning curve. Learning curve with that, though. You got to learn that. You know, you can't go out and just say, hey, I'm, I'm going to go cover a tight end. It's a lot more into it, you know. So um, it, it's been good. I think the, you would be surprised that the, a lot of the pass rushers, they want to they wanna show that they can do that. We'll get a chance to see the linebackers and the rest of the team at Florida's spring game next month. Maybe you feel the stars are aligning for you this week, and so are the planets. Weather permitting, there are some special things to note in the night sky. Later this week, the planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Uranus will line up near the moon as you look west. It only happens every few years. Experts say you can see all five planets with the naked eye, and it's a rare chance to spot Uranus as a green light very close to the bright white Venus. The most impressive time, weather permitting, will be Thursday evening after sunset, but the formation will continue for a couple of weeks. Before we go, one last check on the weather. We're seeing some severe weather to the north of our area in Lake City and in Jacksonville. It looks like much of this weather is going to stay to the north and there is the chance for some scattered showers or thunderstorms in Gainesville. This is Tuesday at 8 p.m. and you can see those storms already breaking apart. So we aren't going to be seeing that same severe weather that plagued much of these northern areas, especially to the south of Georgia. Now the rest of this week we are tracking some rain Saturday and Sunday back to you. Thanks, Tara. BBC World News is next and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. But your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a good night.